We're back in session and we're continuing on with a 4.3.2. Point of order. We not need a motion for the yes. acceptance of. Yes, we do. You are correct, sir. I will make a motion that council accept the Wheatland Broadbed Solution Report as presented. Thank you. Motion on the floor. Any further questions? I'll vote by exemption. Any opposition? Very none seen, none that's carried. We will now move forward to 4.3.2 on page 118, resolution two we're working on about the CSA 8277. Hello council, Taylor Felt here again with the planning and development services team providing the update for resolution 2021-09-12. So currently the land use bylaw does not permit older mobile homes that do not meet the CSA A277 certification standards. Administration has been consulting with other municipalities throughout Alberta to understand current best practices for allowing older or renovated mobile homes in the county and how these types of homes can meet the requirements of the Alberta Building Code. I'll provide a bit of a, a review of the topic for new members of council. The CSA group, formerly known as the Canadian Standards Association, is a standards organization that develops standards in 57 areas, which includes safety and performance standards and construction materials. The CSA registered mark shows that a mobile home constructed in a factory has been reviewed, tested, and certified by an independent agency in order to meet recognized standards for safety and performance. The certification is for the manufacturing process and not for an individual mobile home inspection in the manufacturing facility. Manufactured homes have a label located on the inside door of the electrical panel, which serves as proof with part nine of the National Building Code. <coughs> and in 1992, the Alberta government required all factory built housing um, had to meet the CSA A277 certification criteria and standards. And this meant that factory built homes constructed prior to 1992 under previously accepted CSA standards were no longer accepted in Alberta. When it comes to renovating an older mobile home now, despite any structural or cosmetic upgrades, the mobile home can't be recertified to meet the CSA A277 standard. So through our research, we found that mobile homes manufactured prior to 1992 can be deemed to be in a suitable condition to be moved into the county through a pre-inspection process. This pre-inspection would be conducted by an engineer or a building inspector that would inspect the mobile home for things such as the um, structural stability and integrity of the mobile home and the quality of windows, which refers to those older aluminum windows that are uh, energy inefficient, um, external doors, siding and the roof, for example. The pre-inspection report would provide recommendations on the mobile home's condition and note any updates or renovations such as replacing those aluminum windows, the roof or the floor uh, or the siding that should be made in order to receive a recommendation and accept the mobile home into the county. To do this, the land use bylaw will need to be amended. Amendments can be proposed that offer flexibility and create more opportunities for these older or renovated mobile homes in the county. For example, provisions could include a minimum cutoff year um, whereby a manufactured home older manufactured home before a certain date would not be allowed in the county um, or that they must have previously met CSA certification standards of the day. In terms of next steps, administration will prepare these amendments along with the backyard hen and beekeeping amendments as well as other housekeeping amendments we've been tracking over the past year and circulate them together um, prior to first reading which we're anticipating February of 2022. And that concludes my presentation. If there's any questions, I'd be ha happy to answer them. Thank you for your presentation. Any questions on this portion? I just want to thank you for, um, I was the one that I think brought this forward. I want to thank you for the work on this. Um, the fact that I know there's um, a lot of times um, age doesn't necessarily mean that something is old doesn't, it doesn't, it's past its life. And uh, I know there's been a couple of uh, people have asked me about bringing older stuff on, and and I and if you're in the construction business, you can get a pretty good feel about whether or not the the building the structure is sound or not. So 
the fact that we are able to do this now is, uh, I thank you for your work. Thank you. For me, question I have, what about existing um, mobile homes that we have that are previous to this? Because I know of one in my division that is being used currently as storage. And if, uh, would they be able to upgrade and go through an inspection process to make it as a secondary dwelling? I know I'm going to get asked the question. That In that situation, it would be grandfathered use. However, we're thinking, we're, but they're not using it as a living quarters right now. They're not. They oh, did sorry. not get the permission to do that. Right. You, you'd have to go through the same process of a pre-inspection, showing that it can be brought up okay. to meet the Alberta Building Code. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So I'm just going to put the question or do the motion that uh, Council direct administration to amend land use bylaw. 2016-01 to allow renovated ho mobile homes that do not have CSA A277 certification within the appropriate land use uh, districts. Perfect. In a motion on the floor, any further discussion, questions, concerns? Go ahead, Glenn. This again is three readings. That would include a public hearing as originally. When we come up with this, we were getting a lot of mobile homes moved into the county that nobody wanted, except maybe one person, for reasons that are understandable. When you're drafting this, I would like to see that prior to moving into the county, these renovations are done. I don't want them done move out here, oh, we're going to renovate them, and we'll end up being a storage yard when I... But the problem is, you got a trailer park, somebody set, sells it, you got to get your trailers out of here, so there's a bunch of trailers, got to find a new home or, or go to the landfill, and you get flooded with them. And we've went through it before. And, yeah, so if you put something in there that they stay till they're renovated, then they could come. Such a big deal. Discretionary, with pictures come before the MPC, and and uh, it's mostly what it looks like on the outside that affects the neighbors. My comments. I think in here it was prior inspection before it came. Before it was placed. Before it was placed. Yeah. <laughs> So if, did I call the question? No. So, any further discussion? No, I'll call the question by exemption. Anybody opposed to the motion on the floor? Seeing none, hearing none, that's carried. Move on to 4.3.3, Leaks of Mirfield status. Phase run road acquisition agreement and supplementary agreements. Thank you very much for your presentation. Great job. Good afternoon, Council. Matt from Administration here to present the Lakes of Mirrorfield. An updated status for you and some agreements uh, just for some resolutions uh, from Council. So just by way of background, quickly for the new Councillors, uh, we did acquire the Lakes of Mirrorfield as the development for Phase 2. You'll note below for background, it's a development of 700 housing units. For small, small commercial development and what we have done thus far is we've gone through multiple steps, multiple agreements that we've needed to navigate through also working with the governance structure. Um, so just by way of brief background, more recently uh, we undertook a reorganization of the governance of Mirfield. Previously, there were two condo associations and one phase one homeowners association in order to streamline um, all provision, all service provisions. Uh, the residents uh, requested to undertake an amalgamation under one, under one homeowners association. Um, that amalgamation, uh, by way of background, uh, received uh, quite a bit of support, quite a bit of substantial support. 
Just over 97% of the Muirfield community approved the amalgamation, two abstentions and zero votes in the negative. So there was obviously some widespread support in that amalgamation process. In March, 2021, March 21st, 2021, Council directed us to authorize that amalgamation as we were the phase two and three owners. So that is now complete. What we have experienced as administration and in terms of admin working with the Homeowners Association uh, quite closely is that there's a lot of work in the phase one assets that the county currently does not own. And what this agreement in front of you here today, uh, the road acquisition agreement is a standard agreement in terms of just the county inheriting the asset. There's a couple reasons that this makes sense for the county. Uh, one, obviously, it provides a fulsome um, a development in which the county can go into work on. Currently, if we were to do any work with the phase one road, we would have to hop through multiple hurdles in order to attend to a pothole or do a lift or something like that. So. This just streamlines the process, it brings it in, and it is fully supported by the Homeowners Association, the residents, and staff and administration. So that's the first. Within phase one, we do have a couple of amenities. So we have a gate, we have a couple of signs, there's a few other things there that the Homeowners Association has dealt with in the past. What the Development Amenity Road License Agreement and the HOA Operations Maintenance Agreement deal with is with respect to uh, the amenities within phase one road. So the development and amenity agreement ensures that anything that the homeowners association deals with obviously gets permission first through the county. Uh, it has to pass through our standards and then they have to uh, execute the work in a high level or a workmanlike manner is the legal term. The second is the HOA operations and maintenance agreement. Uh, looks at those amenities and other future amenities that are within the phase one uh, area. There is a figure for you within the uh, background report that you can refer to for phase one. And just, uh, just to finalize this, legal has created these agreements in the best interest of the county as well as within the HOA as well. So both legal counsels give it the check and we just need the resolutions for administration to sign it, send it back to our legal counsel, provide a copy for our records, and then as well, let the HOA know. And that should suffice for the final agreements of the Lakes of Muirfield. Thank you, and that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Um, any questions of staff? Go ahead. The gate, who owns the gate after we sign the agreement? So the gate, is ours. The, the amenities are, are included and the HOA will operate and maintain them as per the HOA operations and maintenance agreement. We have other roads in the county, and road allowances, and the county doesn't allow gates on them except by bylaw. I'm just wondering how we're going to handle this next time somebody comes in and wants to put a Texas gate up on a roadway. We make them pay for it all. And the, the gate is not, it doesn't close. So what we're working on right now with the HOA is to actually remove the gates, okay. right? So they're working on that and we're going through that process with those constituents. The gate has come to its life expectancy and the replacement on it is substantial amount of money and they're reaching out to their residents I believe in this month, uh, if not in January, to discuss if, if that's what they want to do. Because if, if they want to keep the gate there, it's going to have to be all rebuilt. And of course, that would be in agreement with us and they would operate and maintain it. I understand what you're saying. I've made it very clear to the homeowners. Um, it makes it e much easier for us as a county um, if a gate isn't there because it's deemed public. As soon as that gate's closed, my, my interpretation of them is it's no longer public. That's right. So therefore funding and things like that for anything they want within that. So I believe the gate will disappear when they realize the cost. But for right now, um, we're just going through the process. We're just going through the motions, yeah. I, and I understand the process, but understand this too, that Speargrass has asked for a gate and that they will be watching this too, so. Okay. Another question on resolution three, future reserves, they can build on it. Are we talking future phases? Or what, what is a future reserve? 
Uh, so it's, the, it's, if it's not a reserve, it's not. If it's going to be a reserve in the future, how do we know today where the reserve is? Is what I'm trying to say. So there are within phase one a couple of areas, uh, public utility lots or expansions that aren't really for anything right now. I'll give you an example of what's being used right now in phase one. That is basically public reserve is the playground area. And that's in between a couple of lots. Um, and that is actually operated by the homeowners association within phase one. That operation of it is captured under this. If that playground were to hypothetically or any apparatus move, that is a reserve land still. So still they could do something there. Just this agreement ensures that it has to go through the county in order for us to grant permission or something like that and work together. It's basically a working together agreement in terms of what's going on in phase one. So with those this lands. agreement, any reserves that come into the future, the same thing applies as today then? They have to come and ask permission. And Correct. Yeah. yeah. It captures and it keeps things in order. Right, but it still allows the homeowners association leeway to bring ideas forward. Like it's a, it's a work together maintenance agreement, an operations agreement. Yeah. When I first originally read it, at future reserves that means a reserve that isn't here yet. Mm -hmm. Right, but you're talking about in the future. Yes. When you have a reserve, so. Yes. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Further questions? Looking for motions? Um, I'll move that Council direct administration to sign the road acquisition agreement with the Lakes of Mirfield Homeowner Association to acquire road unit 185 as a municipal roadway including all structures and improvements contained within road unit 185. Right. Any further questions on the resolution? Motion, sorry. By exception, any of opposition? Very none seeing none, that's carried. I move the council direct administration to sign the development amenity road license agreement in, or, in order for the Lakes of Muirfield Homeowners Association to use the roadways to maintain, operate, and remove the existing amenities located upon the licensed areas within roadways in a good workmanlike manner and in compliance with the terms and conditions of the agreement. Any questions on the motion? Vote by exception. Any opposition? Hearing none, seeing none, that's carried. I'll make the motion that Council Direct Administration to sign the HOA Operations Maintenance Agreement in order for the Homeowners Association to develop, operate, and maintain the various amenities upon present or future reserves or public utility lots for the benefit of its membership. Questions? Vote by exception. Any opposition? Very none. Seeing none, that's carried. Thank you very much. Go on to 4.4.1. What? Sorry. Did not okay. see you. Just before we move on, I'll just ask everybody to check their email from Brian uh, regarding adding something to this afternoon. <laughs> yes. Session. There was a request from the Reef to add us a topic to an in-camera session today. Uh, she just received the information uh, this morning, so uh, yeah, just check her email. Um, so it'd be in addition to the uh, in-camera item for a proposed twin ice arena in Strathmore. I'd have to take a look at the VoIP section. It's, uh, I think it's related to a meeting that they've requested her to attend this Friday. Asked who to attend, sorry. Uh, the Reeve, I believe. Okay. Um, and Amber, I may, maybe I'm misspeaking, but that was my when I just scanned that email, that's what I thought it was. Yeah, that's my recollection as well. I believe there was a request for representation from administration as well. Oh, okay. I believe it was for the investment attraction or actually economic development, Jimmy Crumble. Okay, we can look at that and proceed with the uh, report on 4.4.1. Brad, go ahead. 
Good afternoon, Council. Brad Bullock with Administrative Administration uh, presenting the uh, November Transportation and Agriculture GM report. Um, so starting on page 152 of the agenda, um, uh, following uh, previous reports, we've got some highlighted items to uh, share and point out to Council specifically, and then uh, after each uh, or the end of each section, uh, an itemized list of, uh, of the, a more, uh, the more detailed items uh, or the, a more detailed list of other items that, uh, that the department is, is working on. Um, so first on, on the list there on page 152, um, just a, an update on the Rosebud Lagoon. Uh, happy to say that that project is now complete and the lagoon is operational. There will be uh, a few small tasks, seeding and such in the spring that needs to be completed, but uh, um, it is uh, up and running now. So that's good. Um, also uh, bridge file, so a bridge replacement on the next page, 153 is underway. Um, and uh, for bridge file 09214, and uh, that sh is expected to be completed by the end of the year. And so that's capital projects. On to operations on page 156, uh, a few highlights uh, for bridge maintenance tenders um, on bridge file 73748. Uh, so the new pier on the on the cap was installed, and then there is repair work going on with the number of bridges around the county, um, expected to be completed by uh, by mid December. Uh, road graveling has been completed, snow fencing around the county in preparation for the winter season is completed. A number of culvert repairs, uh, or sorry, uh, two large culverts were were repaired and replaced at the location indicated. Um, Southwest 1825-234 and 1925-234. Um, brushing operations are underway um, through the winter, and then the 14 uh, meter cat, 14 m cat grader uh, transmission rebuild um, is underway. Estimated to, or was underway, estimated for completion December 3rd. That project uh, where that rebuild is is complete now. Um, uh, so report from Hamlets. Uh, there was some um, uh, rehabilitation work done at the Blackfoot Memorial site, and so there's some photos there. Um, you can see the, some of the trees were cleaned up. Also, what's what's not clear in the photo um, is uh, there was some work done around the around the monument as well um, for uh, border cleanup as well as uh, adding some of the lava rock and cleaning that up. So. And um, I think uh, I think that's it for the report. And uh, if there's any questions, I'm here. We also got the uh, managers online. If there's any any detailed questions for their particular teams. Thank you. Any questions? I just have a, one on the on the cat grader transmission rebuild. It's down for two months. It's under warranty. If it, do they cover for a new grader for that two month? Period, or do we just l sort of live with the fact that we don't have one? And if that's the case, we'll have a warranty. That's a good question. Um, I, I don't think they do, but Cody, if you're on the line, if he's not there, I can take that away. And, uh, and one of our call in the past, I remember him saying that if something goes down, they bring one out. But that's what I remember from before. Cat was usually really good. That's why we use them as a preferred provider. Mm -hmm. I've actually, I was actually chatting with Cody about uh, breakdowns this week, actually, but uh, that never came up. So we'll definitely get an answer and bring it back to you. Well, I'm just just wanted like yeah, it's great. because you, we need we that. evidently have that there because we need that piece of equipment, and it's down for if I have a truck, it's gone for two months. Um, I either have to rent one or so I just, I just yeah interest in, for my interest. Thanks. In my industry, it's called a full service lease. So if you get something that breaks down, they bring you a new one until they fix it. But it's very expensive to have that full service lease. Go ahead. That also has to be specified in the, in yeah. the bill of sale or the lease agreement or whatever. I thought it was that way, but yeah, it'd be great, great, great uh, question and answer. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. You know else? I'll move that Council accepts the General Manager of Transportation and Agriculture November 2021 report as information. Thank you very much. 
That's all Special? I was going to do. Okay. Uh, vote and exemption. Any opposition? Seeing none, hearing none, that's carried. Thanks, Brad. We'll move on to 4.4.2, Wheatland Regional Board Composition Recommendation. Good afternoon again, Council. Brad Bullock from Administration uh, Reporting. Um, so this one was a letter uh, that we received from the WRC to Council. Uh, Council thereafter uh, requested that administration come back with some recommendations on responding to the letter and questions uh, from the WRC. So the question was essentially asking for some suggestions or opinions uh, regarding the uh, potential reorganization uh, of the structure of that board uh, with the uh, resignation of the village of Hassar. Um, so now the WRC is down to four board, board members, two from Wheatland County, one from Rockyford, and one from Standard. Um, so there was a few suggestions uh, provided uh, in the letter uh, that the WRC mentioned that they received from legal counsel. Um, one was to leave the board as is, um, as currently is, with the uh, current makeup of two board members from Wheatland County, one from the Village of Standard and one from the Village of Rockyford. Um, another uh, was to revise to have six voting members on the board, two from each municipality. And um, another was to revise to three voting members, one from each municipality. Um, what we can gather from the discussions in the letter, uh, a couple of the main core interests that we can see potentially are to avoid having an even number of, of board members. Um, uh, as it was one interest that looks like has come up in t just to avoid uh, potential tie votes and, uh, and stagnating decisions. And another one was to uh, keep board member number to a minimum in order to, for cost efficiencies. Um, so Wheatland uh, administration did discuss this and um, we came up with two potential options. Um, both of these uh, were to take into account um, those interests as well as uh, another interest that uh, we felt would be advantageous to the board is to just have enough board members in order to have enough diversity of thought and discussion and, and voting. Um, on that note, we uh, wonder if uh, three, three members may not be enough. Um, and so uh, that leaves keeping to the odd numbers uh, five or seven. Um, both of those would work. Um, the, other, the other thing uh, we would mention as part of our recommendation is as far as the board makeup, um, uh, noting that not every municipality has the same representation on the board. So the recommendations that we've provided kind of kept consistent with that. Not sure if the WRC is interested in changing that or not. So um, under the seven voting member option, um, that would be two from uh, Rockyford, two from Standard, and three from Wheatland. If um, there was an interest in not going to seven and, and keeping it to five in order to control costs. Um, one option there could be to have, again, keeping a similar makeup to what it is now, uh, one from the village of Rockyford, one from the village of Standard, two from Wheatland County, and one member at large. And so this, this last one uh, idea, um, Given uh, weight on keeping the number of board members uh, lower, um, having an odd number of board members, as well as having enough to generate enough diversity of thought and conversation, um, it was county's uh, uh, recommendation um, to respond to the Wheatland Regional Corporation um, with that recommendation of the board makeup. And that's my report, and I'm here for any questions. Thank you very much. Um, Questions? Discussion? Go ahead. I'm just going to speak to you. I think that uh, putting it to five board members is the right thing to do. If you leave it at three, you're very susceptible to something called groupthink, and then they'll end up getting nothing done. So I think it's wise to keep it at five. For myself, I, I you know, it was brought forward. I said on the, on the WRC, 
and I appreciate the input from you guys um, because I never thought about going down in size that it, that it's harder and when it makes sense you don't you can't really get that uh, more ideas in there um, I like this to send this um, to WRC as a recommendation from staff I personally like the second one where there's a somebody that's a member at large that hopefully has no affiliation with anybody on like or not a village resident not a county resident I'd like I even thought in the top of my head somebody from WID would be good at this but uh, just to get some different stuff in there but that's just my my two thoughts two cents but not sure how it will be taken at the board but it's to be seen All right, well, I'll move that uh, Council direct administration to respond to the Wheatland Regional Corporation correspondence dated November 8, 2021, with the recommendation that the WRC board consist of five voting members with the composition of one voting member from the village of Rockyford, one voting member from the village of Standard, two voting members from Wheatland County, and one voting member at large. Thank you very much. Motions on the floor, discussion? Go ahead. Uh, I don't know if I, I would be more in favor of providing the total information package to the board and let the board hash it out. You just give them the one thing, we're limiting our research and what we did and the reasonings thereof and it is a board decision, it's not a Wheatland County decision, so we're just offering them options I would maybe be more in favor of offering them all the options and uh, keeping the goodwill so to say but if, would you consider that as, as a motion Shannon? well I think this board still has the opportunity to choose something else we're only suggesting a recommendation yeah. mm. you could send the recommendation with the information that this is what was, was brought up yeah yeah uh, yes, if I may, um, to the chair, uh, what we could do is if uh, Councillor Laprise is open to a friendly amendment um, to her motion, uh, we could add to include the request for decision that was presented to County Council, and that would provide all the options and everything that we kind of Council discussed. Okay. You accept that? I'll accept that, yep. Okay. It's all public information posted. Whatever. Yeah. Any further discussion? We have a, a friendly amendment to the motion which includes the whole package but the choice that council had made and that will be sent in writing to WRC. Just to note WRC right now has some um, administration is off on sick leave at the moment so it may take some time so don't expect a quick response. So, um, so Motions on the floor, a vote by exemption. Any opposition? Carry none, seeing none, that's carried. Correspondence. We have a bunch of correspondence in here. Red Deer River, Library Association. The Premier likes our municipal tax incentive, which is nice to know. Organizational meeting. Is there anything here that they need back? I think action items on any of these that we know of? Uh, I don't believe so. I think it's all just this information. Okay. Action to accept this information. Also move. Or from Councillor Bigger. Any discussion? Well, the question by exemption, any opposition? Hearing none, seeing none, that is carried for information. A motion to go into camera. We have several items. We have uh, FOIP 24, FOIP 17, FOIP 24, and we have an addition of FOIP. What number would the addition be? We have to vote on adding it. Uh, should we have a vote on adding it to the agenda? Uh, we, sh we should vote to add it and before, I'm going to guess section 21. Before we go into camera? Yes. Yeah. Well, yep. so there was an addition to the agenda 
uh, submitted to us via email under FOIP 21, and it has to do with a neighboring municipality. Um, is there any opposition to adding that? Or I'll make the motion that we add that to the agenda. Is there any opposition to adding that item to the uh, in-camera agenda? Hearing none, seeing none, that's carried. All break.